mechanization. That's exactly what we are talking about. You know this word mechanization. I throw it around loosely, Mare. Hey, there's a lot of weight on this word. Okay, my name is Godfrey Hadang. I'm a farm supervisor here. Uh, what I'm doing here, I'm dealing with the mechanization of the farm, making sure that we have land that is prepared so that we can plant. So that comes with a lot. It comes with pl proper planning, of which you need to make sure that you have proper mechanization for that season. So every crop, we need a different preparation, but even if we don't have enough mechanization, but we rent them out from different people, of which it's a challenge at some point. Yeah, it, it, it takes a lot to actually get the tractor to come here, because it's money, it's time. You need to make sure that you plan properly, arrange the guy who's going to come in and assist you. And speaking of mechanization, what machinery does he need for, for your planting season? Obviously we need a plow, uh, of which that we use it as a, as, a, as a first mechanization that we use to till the, the soil. Uh, we also need the high speed disc to loosen the soil because we don't use the rotavator which is breaking the clods. As you can see, there's clods here. So the high speed, make sure that we don't have such clause because the seeds can't germinate on top of this thing. So we need to loosen the soil. So we use the, 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 the high speed disc after the plow, then we put the high speed, then it loosen and level the soil. As you can see, it's very level. So that's when we can bring the, the planter. We need to do Mechanization often throws people off. So how does one know what to buy when it comes to mechanization? Um, Tabi, to answer your question for mechanization, I would say for small commercial farmers, actually for any farm I would say you should always start at the back of your tractor that you have if you start because your first phase of mechanization when you talk for crop production is obviously putting something into the soil and you need to think of the best way to prepare your soil because you're going to put your seeds into that soil and you want your seed to grow and germinate and eventually you want to take that out again and have a good yield. So the importance is making sure what you put into the soil and how you put it in. So different soils got different, uh, let me say, characteristics and how it retains water during a dry and a wet year. You've got a water table, depending on where your water table is, what type of crop you plant, uh, how the, uh, the roots of that crop needs to get water and where they get it from. Because you need a good balance of chemistry and you can do soil analysis on your soil. They can do it every, uh, let's say, uh, 10 or 100 square, uh, square meters. You can do your, your soil analysis to understand the chemistry, the compaction, the type of soil, looking at your climate. Then you need to decide what tillage practice I want. So you can go into a minimum till, a zero till. Um, some soils you're gonna need to till at least once. Some it's once every three years, once every five years. But your soil analysis is the starting point. Once you've got that, then you need to do your seed bed preparation, as we would call it. And for that, you need a specific piece of implement that does that. But you need to know why you prepare certain seed beds and why you do it. The most important tool on your farm is the planter. At the end of the day, the planter is the one that puts the seed and fertilizer. If you go, obviously, with granular fertilizer, um, if you put that into the ground, that's obviously where you need a precise location of how deep it needs to be depending on your practice. But your biggest yield gain is with your, your technology on your plant. So the moment you go to a, a better, I'm not saying the best technology that we use for variable rate applications, but at least something that has a precise uh, accuracy in placing seed and fertilizer. That would be your, obviously the, the, when I say you need to put something into the soil and understand your soil, that is what I mean by understanding the chemistry of your soil, the compaction, and then what is the right practice depending on the, the, the characteristics of the soil and then you start to apply uh, your, your soil preparation and planting. I'm here with Zanele at Imnaba Farms and we're going to talk about how she gets around not having the machinery that she needs, especially now that it is planting season. Now let's say now you have a bit of a challenge getting this machinery. How will that affect your productivity and ultimately your income for the farm? it affects the yield or our end results, our yield. You need the right machinery to do the right um, uh, soil prep. So the foundation is key in order for you to get uh, the good yield. So we do have a tractor here at our farm, but our tractor is very small. It does not have the capacity to run the two center pivots, which one center pivot is 20 hectare, the other one is 21 hectare. 
So what we do is that we hire out the machinery from a local farmer within our neighborhood who does the um, actual work of the soil prep. It's quite costly, but the, we are happy with the end results that we get. So with our tractor, because of its small, what we do, we only use it, um, we use the implement of the boom sprayer, whereby we are able to uh, spray for herbicide or insecticide. Is it going to be better for you to have your own machinery or is it more cost effective to hire? It's going to be better for us to have our own machinery because you get to do your soil prep at your own time and uh, cost-wise, obviously, um, we do not have to pour diesel for someone else. We are pouring the diesel for us and then we are using the diesel on our ground. And then, you know, you get, if you see that an, another area is not done correctly or the way you want it, you get to run it again yourself. With me uh, having our own tractor, it will even um, bring growth to us as a farm. It will put us to a higher level than we are at the present moment. So we rather save our tractor and uh, find a contractor. So Davi, let's talk, we're talking mechanization now. And as you now know, farming is not cheap. So where does one start if they want to purchase a machine? Darby, uh, I, I think if you look behind me, there's, there's very beautiful machines, but these bloody things are ex expensive. So you, you do want to start at the appropriate one. You know, which one will fit my, my farming business? So I think first of all, identify that. And then you start with the finance part. You know, obviously it's a loan, so you, you apply for credit. Those cash flow statements we're always talking about, those budgets, that's the important one. Um, you apply for finance, and then there's certain terms. You know, how many years you want to pay it off, what's the interest rate, and interest rates is always individually based. There's not a, a blanket interest rate for everyone. Mm. So I think that's your starting point. But what's important is identifying the one that's the best for your farm. Which is more cost effective, buying machinery or renting machinery? Well, <laughs> tell me, I think, uh, it depends on the situation. How long are you going to use it? Mm. Uh, do you have warranties uh, in place? You know, that's important. Um, the, the, the terms of the lease, I think that would dictate. Mm. Uh, in general, uh, it's, it's cheaper to buy, uh, especially if you have got a nice deposit that you can, can put down. Mm. Then it's your, your repayment structure or your, uh, your payments, monthly payments will be lower. Mm. But if, you, if you're on a lease, you know, it's, it's in general higher than, and you pay much more credit than you're supposed to when you do a right out buy, mm. uh, for example. To rent a tractor is expensive. If you, if you look at certain tractors per kilowatt with what we have in a market for financing used equipment, uh, even financing new equipment at very reduced rates, very low deposits, you can actually buy a tractor because a tractor you use all the time. So, so depending on your business, not necessarily you see a lot of people saying rent is a better option on tractor than buying. Uh, if, you, if you have to look at rental options, planting is, is difficult because the planting window is very small and if you and 50 other people are uh, in the same market and there's only 25 people that can give the service, you're going to lose yield. So you don't want to mess around with that as well. So you need to make sure that if there's not availability of enough contractors in the area, rather do it yourself. But again, look for financing options. Where I would say that the, the, the change might come in is with spraying and, and possibly with harvesting. So harvesting, obviously you can get contract harvesters in. Harvest is an expensive piece of equipment. Um, even if you go second hand, uh, the size of equipment, the header, that, that gets expensive. So I would say there is an option to rather rent or rather get a contractor in to, to do your harvest until you have enough scale to say, based on my calculations, this is my cost to, to rent or my cost to, to have a contractor versus my premiums if I finance uh, a machine. Uh, obviously you won't buy it cash, but, and I'm talking you or use small class three, class four combines uh, with like four or six row uh, areas at the front. So it's not necessarily the big stuff. You want to manage cash flow, right? Any farmer wants to manage cash flow. So, so when you buy a piece of equipment, if you buy a tractor, there's, there's extended warranties that you can finance with the machine. You can add the technology, finance that with the machine over extended periods of time at reduced interest rates. 
Um, so if, if you have time, save up money for deposit and then you go to, to your to your mechanization industry and see what offers on the table and whatever is the best one at a time would, would suit your needs as long as you know you've got service afterwards. That's also important. To all the organizations, whether it be government or private, watching this interview, what would you like to say to them um, in terms of assisting you guys for mechanization? To come to the actual farm and see uh, the need of us having a tractor and the right implements and also to cut down the red tapes and they must speak to a, whatever their requirements must speak to a farmer. Uh, as farmer to farmer we have uh, different uh, requirements. You know, we cannot say one size with all. Uh, they actually need to come and see what can work for me, what can work for another farmer. And I believe that will put us in a good position or in a different position whereby we move from being small scale farmers to be on a commercial level. Thank you.